Hello everyone, I am Dr. Srivanila. Today's topic is solitary bone cyst. It is also called as hemorrhagic bone cyst, extravasation cyst, traumatic bone cyst, simple bone cyst, unique hemorrhagic cyst, idiopathic bone cavity. Solitary bone cyst. It is a benign cavity in bone that is either empty or contains fluid. These intraponic cavities are not lined by epithelium, hence it is a non-epithelial cyst. Pathogenesis Intramedullary hemorrhage It originates from intramedullary hemorrhage following traumatic injury. Hemorrhage occurring within the medullary space of bone after trauma heals by organization of clot and eventual formation of connective tissue and formation of new bone. Traumatic Injury Theory According to Traumatic Injury Theory, after traumatic injury to an area of spongy bone containing hemopoietic marrow enclosed by a layer of dense cortical bone, there is a failure of organization of blood clot and for unexplained reasons, subsequent degeneration of the clot eventually producing an empty cavity within the bone. Degeneration of clot. In the development of the lesion, the trabecula of bone in the involved area become necrotic after degeneration of the clot and bone marrow. Although some viable marrow tissue must persist to initiate resorption of the involved trabecula. Infiltrating edema. The lesion then appears to increase in size by steady expansion produced by a progressive infiltrating edema on the basis of restriction of venous drainage. This expansion tends to cease when the cyst-like lesion reaches the cortical layer of the bone, so that expansion of the involved bone is not a common finding in the solitary bone cyst. Other causes of origin of cyst. It may originate from bone tumors that have undergone cystic degeneration or as a result of faulty calcium metabolism such as that induced by parathyroid disease or it may originate from necrosis of faulty marrow due to ischemia and result of low-grade chronic infection or as a result of osteoclastic activity resulting from disturbed circulation caused by trauma thereby creating an unequal balance of osteoclastic activity and repair of bone. Clinical features Age and sex occurs most frequently in young persons at an age of 6 to 20 years. Male predominates as they are exposed to traumatic injury most frequently than females. Males is to females ratio of occurrence is 3 is to 2. Next, site usually found in mandible anywhere from the symphysis to the ramus. One third are found in maxilla in anterior region. Symptoms Asymptomatic in most cases. Occasionally, there may be evidence of pain and tenderness. Signs Cortical swelling or slight tooth movement are not usual finding and teeth are vital. Aspiration Needle aspiration is actually unproductive. If productive, it contains either a small amount of straw-colored fluid, shed of necrotic blood clot, and fragment of fibrous connective tissue. Histopathology Solitary bone cyst is remarkable for its lack of tissue. The submitted tissue consists of scant fragments of fibrovascular connective tissue, extravasated red blood cells, and pieces of reactive vital bone. No cyst epithelium is identified. Radiographic features. It may be found in dentulous as well as edentulous arc. It appears as a radiolucent lesion with a spectrum of well-defined to moderately defined borders. Scalloped superior or occlusal margins where it extends between the roots of the teeth. These are variable sized. Some cysts are only a centimeter in diameter while others may involve most of the molar area of the body of mandible as well as part of ramus. The lesion is classically said to scallop 
or push up around the associated roots root resorption is uncommon and the associated teeth should test vital large lesions may have a vague multilocular appearance and even occasionally cause bone expansion no cortical destruction is seen ct well defined corticated non expansal radiolucent mandibular region is seen mri t1 homogeneous hypointensity t2 homogeneous hyperintensity t1 plus c mild enhancing diagnosis clinical diagnosis it is very difficult to make clinical diagnosis radiological diagnosis well defined radiolucency with vital tooth with history of trauma will give clue to diagnosis laboratory diagnosis aspiration is non productive differential diagnosis radicular cyst in radicular cyst tooth is usually non vital all tooth cysts tend to have more rounded appearance next central gingival granuloma it usually shows evidence of internal bony septa where traumatic bone generally lacks it is more common in mandibular anterior region next ameloblastoma and odontogenic myxoma these are usually multilocular next lesions of eosinophilic granuloma these lesions are not well corticated as that of traumatic bone cyst next fibrous dysplasia it is not so corticated management surgical exploration simple surgical exploration to establish the diagnosis when correct diagnosis is determined enucleation and curettage are carried out next intralesional steroid injection this can yield limited success in some cases of traumatic bone cyst thank you everyone hope you all like the video please like share and subscribe